Hello, my name is Simon Harrison, CMO for Avaya. Um, really appreciate the opportunity to present to you today on remote working, or perhaps more in particular, the way Avaya thinks about remote working today and for the future, and, and, and the technology supporting that, that future. Clearly, COVID-19 has changed the business world in dramatic form, actually. It's really quite extraordinary what's happened in, in, in over the recent weeks. Um, where businesses all over the world, with some sense of urgency, have had to consider how to you know, transform to be a more remote working organisation, to empower staff through technology, you know, to figure out changes in their processes and uh, you know, their, their policies and their strategies, and to seek you know, you know, sort of best practice advice from the likes of my former colleagues and friends at Gartner on how to do this remote working thing. Um, and then I've seen not just you know, sort of the, the organisations in the tech world and those normal sort of organisations that might, might be thinking about remote working technology, it may make sense for them too. But those that are really sort of, you know, those obscure sort of use cases as well, where, you know, for example, health hospitals suddenly truly reliant on connecting with patients in, in clever ways via remote solutions. Um, educational facilities still giving classes. We've got, you know, we've got Milan, you know, we've got, all kinds of you know, uh, support for educational facilities across the world and especially in some of those COVID-19 hotspots, although it seems to be quite prevalent for everywhere now. Um, we've found, if, if I've got a colleague in the marketing team that has is, is delivering or part of um, sermons being delivered you know, via church family, with a con congregation of church families using remote technologies, all kinds of fantastic use cases that have, have, have joined the mix of organisations that are just trying to keep them you know, themselves going, keep, keep productivity up and make sure that they can continue to help customers. Clearly though, remote working isn't a new thing, right? It's it's been around for many years. I'm sure many in the audience would be able to talk about the benefits in quite clear terms. I myself used to work for you know, remotely. I've done it for years before. Um, and so that's not new. You know, we've seen it, especially in the kind of customer services space, you know, remote advisors and contact center agents is something that's really quite common. What is new though is probably the way we work. If you consider the evolution in the way we need to get things done, if you consider that my workplace, my modern workplace is pretty much anywhere. Um, we're really needing to address not just remote working, but the work anywhere sort of ethos as part of the, you know, the, the sort of technolo technology ambition as well. And, and by that, I, I mean, you know, um, you know, the work anywhere ethos would, would, would ensure that if I do get to a coffee shop soon, hopefully, as, as, as once the lockdown is, is kind of lifted here in the UK, I can carry on being productive, I can get things done. I might have a bit of an expectation around the Wi-Fi, you know, I might be quite disgruntled if it doesn't work because I want to be productive there where I am, when I am. Um, similarly, if I'm in a hotel and I've got a planned set of activities for the day before my day begins, as my day comes to an end, before I go and have some dinner, I want to be productive in those various spaces like the you know, sort of reception area, the cafe, the restaurant area, my modern place of work isn't really sort of time constrained similarly you know i find myself quite often i get the pop-up on my phone saying i need to join a meeting and it's a it's a video conference with you know 25 30 people from across the world that 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 needs to take place it needs to happen we need to keep things moving and the fact that i'm just about to try and join the security queue at an airport given my time of day trying to get across time zones it's kind of a moot point. I still need to be productive. So this work anywhere world is really what we should be thinking about in terms of the future of remote working as we sort of evolve uh, from this thing and, and we start to get back to business as usual. Hopefully we can see that soon. Um, and so that leads me to be thinking about the tools. You know, When you look at the tools that we use for remote working and, and, and us trying to use for this evolved anywhere working um, you know, way of getting things done, it still very really sort of reflects things that were introduced almost a couple of decades ago. About 17 years ago, Gartner introduced its Unified Communications Magic Quadrant, for example. And that was around four key, delivering on four key things. Meetings, messaging, calls, and presence. Presence was the big thing, right? And those reasonably monolithic applications 
were perfect, I think, for what was really more of a nine to five world. I could go to work and pretty much guarantee that I could get out of the, the door uh, on a regular basis at a similar sort of time. And that was because my work was reasonably planned. I could probably plan most of my week. Today, we live in a totally different world. So remote working has to take on that burden of addressing what is a different way of working in the, you know, the sort of work anywhere uh, challenge too. And that means, I think, looking at the technology slightly differently. And, and it's not just you know, how capable it is from a features and benefits perspective, it's how well it connects the dots. If you think about um, a meeting, for example, how inefficient is, is getting a meeting together, having the meeting and following up the meeting? You firstly start off in Outlook and you've got to figure out who is going to be on this thing. You Is it the same people as last time if it's a repeat meeting? Um, do I need to change up the names? Are people on holiday? What have we got to work with here? And then we're looking at what was the activities we tracked from the last one? Is the document updated? Did I capture that last point correctly? I meant to check in with so-and-so because I wasn't clear about the last meeting, whether he said he'd done it or not. And you're booking a meeting room or a huddle room or you're booking online, hopefully, in this remote world, but you've got people that are in huddle rooms and people in offices that are trying to join it as well. So you've got to think about the logistics of the meeting sort of space. Then during the meeting, you've got a ton of people trying to not get actions and bringing probably a bunch of excuses around why they didn't progress certain actions. You've got to track that. Again, you get your Word document out or something, share it maybe. Um, and then after the meeting, you're, you're sort of following up and closing things off and getting ready for the next one. And it's a really sort of inefficient old way, really, of being productive. It's slow, it's not very connected and so on. And so again, I think that when it comes to supporting the anywhere working ethos now, important to be starting to think about the technology a little differently and, and starting to question whether what was introduced as again nearly a couple of decades ago around UC being enough really. Then we have to think about the booming experience economy, right? So if you look at your everyday, I've got a smart watch, I've got my smartphone which you know around 2010 there was the there's an app for that so that's not really 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 new news but we've got smart TVs with widgets that empower you to get connected during a game or whilst watching a movie via a widget to a customer services department you've got um, home devices such as Google and Alexa interesting thing there is my dad can't send me a text message doesn't know how to <laughs> still can't get that right but happy to chat away to Alexa get the weather get the news get things done actually so we've got this smart world that's changed the experience economy so the, you know, the experience economy has evolved it's booming and so you have to be considering that too in the context of this anywhere working ambition when looking at solutions that are going to support the future of the work and the way we work remotely um, more and more and then in terms of personas as well you know the, the experience economy is booming because it can support different ways to realize the benefits of these touch points and modalities i mean if i'm a business traveler first thing is i'll book my flight via my phone and then i'll be looking to try and secure a seat on the left bank rather than the middle bank if I'm traveling as, as a business uh, as a business you know, as a business person and I'll be you know you know making sure that when I get to the airport I can use my wallet to use my boarding pass on my phone and then perhaps if I'm going through to the plane I'll use my watch to tap in my boarding pass that's my experience you know, kids in the family I might want to be looking for an experience and enables them to be kept entertained and to support with checking in way too much luggage. You know, can I use my loyalty scheme to do something so that I'm expedited or whatever? And then with with friends, it's a different experience again, again, driven by these these um, differences in, in in the experience economy, the devices that people use, and and it's offering in my mind again an opportunity to amp up or improve the remote working potential to be even cleverer with the ways in which we can work remotely to you know to really drive home some of the value that can be derived so when you consider remote working or the work anywhere collaboration and productivity solutions out there key point make sure that you're you know looking at how it supports the evolution in terms of touch points and, mod and multiple modalities you know voice digital messaging um, a pretty common touch 
gestures, haptic support, natural language understanding, all of those kind of things. You're, is your meeting solution support live transcription to be able to effortlessly you know, use that information? And this is today's experience economy, right? So I'm not talking about futures. Important to recognize that. Um, and so you can't really afford, I think, as part of the future of remote working, the future of work anywhere, be narrowly focusing on you know, tactical ambitions around just a meeting. The in-meeting experience was the thing that we addressed nearly a couple of decades ago. Worth talk, looking at this from sort of a collaboration um, uh, perspective, not least because, of course, one of the overarching ambitions is to pro- improve customer and employee experiences, right? And customer experience, employee experience too, is about feelings. Everyone, I'm sure, is aware of the age-old adage of it's not necessarily you know, people don't tend to remember what was said or done, but they do remember how they were made to feel. And so technology acts as an enabler for these customer employee experiences. Um, but it's really about you know, people applying discretionary effort, really, uh, to boost customer experiences, or employees boosting customer experiences through discretional effort and being, feeling engaged and empowered to do that. EX is so crucial. A crude example is in my coffee shop, when I get a chance to go there again, I'm missing that place. Um, there's a couple of baristas in there that have got a competition on to decide who's best at creating a heart shape in my coffee. Now, they feel um, empowered to do that. It's, it's fun. And their boss isn't saying, oh, you can't do, afford to do that. You've got to get on with making the next coffee. They're encouraged to have this kind of you know, connection with customers. That makes me um, you know, a fan of the brand. I think I like the way they support their staff here and almost a proponent of the brand. So, yeah, in terms of um, EX, powering CX, really important to, to recognize um, that ultimately they're the two sides of the same coin. And when it comes to um, remote working solutions, again, are you thinking about two sides of the same coin? Are you thinking about customer experiences and employee experiences in equal measure? Because that's really the sort of, you know, um, the way to be procuring technology. Uh, uh, lots of insights around how this exploded experience economy is described, the challenges and ambitions of addressing it from a customer and employee experience perspective and a collaborative you know, collaborative and productivity perspective. Gartner, uh, as one example, you, describes it as the multi-experience economy. There's obviously lots of insights out there, but theirs is pretty good at describing it being about touch points, modalities and personas. And you know this whole new world of work is... is kind of complicated further still by um, what I touched on is at the beginning, that sort of unplanned work world we live in now. It really is an unplanned uh, you know, sort of world that we live in. And it requires hyper decision making. It requires hierarchy, less collaboration. We almost need to actively encourage teams to be able to be agile and fast and um, you know, more available and so on. To, 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 to really do well in, in today's experience economy. I think um, what COVID-19 also did was enabled organisations to realise how good they are at being able to do this. We set up Tiger Teams at Avaya and it was amazing to me how within hours we were creating offers so we could give technology away for free. We'd set up our digital front of house, we'd created a resource centre, we'd created a hotline, we were offering advice via blogs and, and you know press articles and all kinds of things and and, and again I've achieved in hours not not days we were actually able to do that through using our own technology our spaces technology was um, is is fantastic at, I believe at addressing what is the future of work and I'll, also I'll touch on a little bit about that you know in terms of the the way we work being more around tar- targeting a specific outcome, an objective, um, you know, uh, a defined strategy. I want to, I want to make my business better. I want to, you know, I want to come up with a new product naming strategy. I want to, you know, get this event really well put together. It doesn't matter what it is. Spaces is about collaborating, collaborating and being productive, but in a sort of continuum of work effort way. So. You, you create a space of everyone you think might be interested, remotely involved, or have something to do with what it is you're trying to achieve. And then they're empowered in this hierarchy-less way to jump in and, and just do and get things done and support. And they're you know, empowered to, you know, via the space, elevate a conversation that's quite involved suddenly to a meeting that's tagged automatically to the space. You can watch back any meeting, all the items uh, around 
you know, what needs to be done, the tasks are tracked within the space, there's you know, pinned posts, it's a very social sort of, it's, a, it's, a, it's really sort of breaking down this or addressing this sort of broken down way of, of meeting in particular as well as a few other ways in which I think we need to be doing better in terms of supporting collaborative productivity in this anywhere working world. And, and you know, honestly, the, the ways in which the guys were able to change sales, marketing, product, even legal, you know, the process of supporting them you know, in this such agile, fast way was extraordinary. Uh, we, we called them, I think, war rooms using our spaces technology, but it, were, but it was phenomenal. That is, um, for me, just the beginning of the ways in which we will see the technology landscape evolve to support this more work anywhere world coming out of the other end of this thing. A ACO is uh, you know, addressing the, sort of, sort of the smaller mid-market organisations that want to be collaborative and productive, empower the staff to be connected where they are, when they are with the device in their hand, very fast, very easily. That, that SaaS-based model, you know, Avara is a, a significant organisation, over 8,000 staff, you know, um, you know, over 100,000 companies that we help across the world is um, a strong premise based technology business but we are a SaaS based company we, we are you know very much an agile uh, and, and progressive innovator so we're doing lots of great things to speed up that kind of access to the applications and that you know forms part of the principles by which that we provide our technology to market in fact you know, speed to value applications is a defining solution principle um, we do that in terms of being a leading contact centre and unified communication solution provider but we also do uh, a great job of extending that so you can grab some nuance or some Google contact centre AI or other forms of you know, pr predictive models or other forms of AI Verin and you know, just to name a few key, key vendors that we have sort of pre like by by design pre-integrated and provided lots more value in what we do not least in the collaborative space and then we support innovation at the edge so as part of spaces for example it's built on CPAS so you can extend that to do very clever things to connect dots across the organization bearing in mind CX is organizational wide, uh, wide of course and that's enabled us to, to, to do some wonderful things for customers uh, we helped in just a few weeks over 11,000 companies become remote um, organizations we've helped over 2 million staff work remotely and it's something I'm very proud of we've, we've done you know some great things with 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 key companies um, hospitals educational facilities all kinds of extraordinary stories that we have I'm not going to go into too much details around them on, on this on during this presentation it's obviously we're keen to get to the to the question answering, we could perhaps talk about it then. One we're particularly proud of is Humana, where you know 13 million plus members, they've got over 41,000 employees, they've got a lot of customers that are perhaps are elder, and they, you know, they're using the phone. We could we move 21,000 agents to 21,000 contact center agents to work remotely very quickly, and we've supported the business in lots of other ways from a remote working perspective. I could cite many examples of how we've helped from a sort of customer perspective. In that vein, we did create the COVID-19 resource hub. We've got you know, our Tiger team powered front of house resources in terms of the website. We provide guidance and support and the hotline. We provided special offers around uh, education and nonprofits. We've said you can have it for free for 90 days and then we've offered the same for other organizations for about 60 days. Go and use this stuff, keep your business going and we're here to help. We really want to make sure that um, you know we uh, we are able to um, keep the you know keep the the worldwide economy economy going as best as we can. From the position we're in, we're able to do something, and so we have really been doing something. In fact, I would mention also that the Wuhan hospital that was built on the side of the mountain early on, we were very quick to coordinate with partners and deliver, you know. Um, collaborative technology so earlier patients then could connect to their loved ones and so on. We've been helping since the beginning basically. But circling back to the what I think is the new normal, you know, the work anywhere ethos powered by an evolution in the technology, not just things that were born, you know, nearly a couple of decades ago around UC, video conferencing and these are all such these are these are you know, narrow purpose apps that, that address 
some of the ambitions in terms of this connected remotely world but the you know the new normal requires um, the the you know, reflection of the evolved experience economy the work anywhere ethos which is going to be the new normal um, and your technology strategy should be think you know, th- should be aligned to address some of those things or make sure that you can be thinking about some of those things we have um, ensured that uh, I, I guess as, as a as a, as a vendor of many, that m- companies won't be able to ignore the efficiencies of, of remote working from a cost perspective, staff being more productive. You know, I always find it interesting when you look at um, the way you get things done in a working environment, in an office. I could see my friend Steve over there and he's got his head down, he's working away and I think I won't disturb him. And then I get into something, when I look up, there's someone else at his desk, I, I'll, I'll circle back in a minute. And then when I look up again, he's gone, or I need to oh, miss my shot. And so being in <laughs> in that live environment, I could find myself being less productive than pinging in via a message, because we live in a planned call world, right? You know, we don't necessarily have unplanned calls anymore. It's 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 usually a, are you available for a call message first? Um, we don't tend to answer calls if we don't recognise the number. So we live in this sort of this world of, of messaging anyway. Are you available for a, for a call? If I if it wasn't in the right in the same space, I wouldn't necessarily do that. And then via this collaboration technology, I'll get a response. Yeah, I'll be free in five minutes, and we get things done. And so it's interesting to suggest that the remote collaborative technology is perhaps improving connections in some extraordinary ways. But there will still be as we come out of this and and looking at the new normal. Uh, much more in terms of work anywhere support there will be staff that still want to go to the office especially in big enterprises they miss that sort of camaraderie they miss that ability to catch up with friends over coffee and actually plan things and get things done you know create ideas together so i think big you know big enterprises in particular are going to be still looking to do some of that but there will be a lot more obviously looking to be product- productive rather work anywhere you know the ev- i think the evolution of remote working sort of um, ambition that said, thank you so much for the time to present today. I hope I said some in- interesting things and some things that are useful. Avaro is here to help if we can. Um, looking forward to you know, catching up and, and taking some questions from you guys next. Thanks. Hi, Simon. So if, um, in my screen share, if you double click, it should make it larger. So the first thing that we have is how do you manage a work-life balance being always connected? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a great question. Um, again, I can hear myself, so forgive me. I'm going to try and answer the best as questions I, best as I can. Um, you have to be reasonably disciplined in terms of the the way that you're so connected um, via the my- myriad of devices that you have to be so connected, clearly. I find myself um, being quite, I guess, Diligent with ensuring that I I'm not um, likely to be interrupted whilst I'm trying to watch a movie and so forth. Um, you, you know, it's 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 not something that you can, I guess, implement at an enterprise sort of level so easily. It's it's more of a um, you know self you know self discipline. Perhaps one of the downsides of having that bring your own device sort of uh, you know freedom. Let me just get rid of this screen. Okay, now I can hear myself a little better. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's it's um, it's it's quite it's quite fascinating actually. But I remember many moons ago when I was working for Enge House, and I was really excited about access to this new BlackBerry device that was going to give me uh, access to my emails whilst I was you know traveling around. And I thought, wow, this is going to be fantastic. And little did I realize that was a turning point by which I'd look back and think. Damn it! Um, I, I miss the days when I wasn't so connected. So yeah, it's it's really down to being quite, I think, quite disciplined in terms of, you know, using the device's abilities to turn, you know, pop-ups off and and to make sure that you are, um, you know, if you can manage your your devices such that you've not got, um, uh, you know, uh, no way to say right, I'm off of work for the moment, um, and 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 to enjoy your own free time basically. Think twice to minimize video. 
Is it Drew second, that? Uh, yeah. So second question is, how do you schedule or structure your days with remote work? Click twice to minimize videos in the way. Ah, here we go. How do you schedule or structure days with remote work? Um, it's it's uh, I, I guess the overarching thing is if it's not something that well, I find myself on suggesting if it's not in the diary, I'm not you know um uh not, not not going to do it but I'm, I'm much more um i guess diligent again around if it's not something that's planned in terms of the things that i even if it's an unplanned thing as i've touched on in the in the in the presentation uh, by virtue of it being <laughs> referenceable in, in my time timeline of things that i need to get done i uh i will you know i'll be quite i'll be quite um I guess bullish in in ensuring that I've got the 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 time that should be free to me is it sort of remains free to me. The, the remote working world clearly means that you can also take advantage of, um, especially if you're perhaps working in time zones uh, across the world, of um, being able to start perhaps slightly later in the day if it makes sense to, if it's kind of going to fit with the rest of the. The team in your organisation um, and work slightly later, so you can you, you can be quite clever with the time you've got. You can make it more effective. Um, I, I think you know, the the way that I I think you have to you know, schedule the the, the work. It, it really it has to be around the things that that make most sense given the kind of organisation you are, the way your teams work, where they are, and so forth. Um, and just be quite. You know, passionate about still making sure that you uh, you know you, you maintain though that work-life balance absolutely crucial to try and support that if you're a employer of course when it comes to your staff you need to make sure that they are um em empowered to be you know to, ha to have that work-life balance to make sure that they're they're not working through the evenings and again i find myself doing that with people around me i i I'm very conscious of that. So it's, I guess in that in that regard, you have to promote that culture of thinking within the organization. The senior team have to make sure that they're encouraging their leaders leaders to support staff in being sensible with their time in their days um, and structuring their work accordingly. So it's, it's, a, it's a company wide sort of supported thing that has to be implemented really for it to work well. Um, and, and, you know, an element of, as I said, being quite, uh, not regimental, but being quite strong about you know maintaining those times that uh, really should be for your for your own you know ho home life pleasures, as it were. All right. The next question is: What are the apps you are using most on your phone? Most on your phone. What does your home screen look like? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> I guess in terms of the the primary applications, they are all to do with being reasonably connected. I have a myriad of applications that enable me to do that. Of course, Avaya provides its own technology. So there are, I've got a, a couple of key apps that, are, that, that form part of our software solutions. Um, the rest is reasonably uh, balanced. I've got, you know, social social uh, apps. I've got access to things like Twitter and and uh, messaging, uh, Facebook Messenger, etc., and and I have you know typically the uh, the email and 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 other sort of productive apps I can access, for example, online Office three Office three six five etc. to look at PowerPoint things etc. as I as I fly around, the 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 I I, I don't tend to have things like um, games and so on that can be quite distracting when it comes to the thing that might be near me whilst I'm trying to get things done remotely. Uh, it's quite easy to get, <laughs> I guess, sidetracked by your favourite game. Um, so largely messaging productivity apps, but with a, a sprinkling of things that enable me to socially connect, not least with um, with friends to manage that, that balance. I've got uh, a few WhatsApp groups. I've got a few friends that I go driving with. I like to get an odd message from those guys throughout the day, so I make sure that I can see those things. It's important to have that sort of downtime, you know, sort of, I guess, uh, in in and amongst the the more productive time that you might well have as a remote worker, perhaps.
And last question, what tools do you use to help with work-life balance? I um, I have a, a an iPad Pro, which I find myself um, using quite a lot to, uh, you know, if, if we weren't in lockdown mode, I would grab that and I would go and sit in a coffee shop and get things done. And um, it effortlessly becomes, if I get back to the to, to the home, sit on the couch, it effortlessly becomes something I might sit there and watch something from Netflix on as well, uh, or um, you know, watch a movie, etc. If I'm in a hotel uh, or if I'm travelling, so I guess sort of my favourite di- device in that it really helps to make sure that I can I can enjoy a bit of um, me time sort of activities when it comes to watching things etc doing research or reading things or maybe doing a bit of shopping via amazon i like that sort of effortless touch and support for from an ecosystem perspective being able to sort of what i'm doing with that device i can effortlessly transfer to my phone and carry on doing it there and so forth um i i do have um again a few of our things we've got uh, a, a huddle room technology that you can sit on top of the telly that makes it easy for me to join meetings and then switch back away again so I can keep that distance I guess is the key way to describe it I can join a meeting and then get back to doing something so that it doesn't perhaps disrupt my whole evening uh, the way I describe that is perhaps for example if I had to use my, my MacBook to have a meeting via a video call and I have one of those an obscure time because it supports the rest of the company And then I sit there and I've got my emails coming through. I'm more likely to get sidetracked and start doing a bit more work. But where I'm using a separate device that is just for video calls, as an example, I can I can switch back off to to the fun thing that I was doing. uh, If I've had to make myself available at a slightly um, inconvenient time, for example. But for me, it's really about sort of mobile productivity, ability to work, activity based working, team based working by the devices that I have and and so I do sort of buy into an ecosystem where I can you know there's some great ecosystems of course Google's ecosystem Apple's key ecosystem tends to make things easier if you want to sort of traverse different things where you are when you are basically um, and, and and can help with as I said that balance of not being too completely consumed by work things um, if you've got this you know just siloed laptop and it's just about work and nothing else I, I think it's a little more difficult to 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 switch tracks and do something a bit more fun maybe